going on and a lot of people run from it. But I'm not because I'm not scared of these subjects. Doesn't phase me at all. To address Monica McNutt's point, I found it very unfortunate that she would say that. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the executive producer of First Take. You ever heard of Monica McNutt? You have now, because she's on First Take a lot. Shanae Ogumake, absolutely wonderful, spectacular basketball analyst, et cetera, et cetera, WNBA player in her own right. Ask her how it's been to be on First Take. Now, let me do some translations here, because this deserves translations, and I want to break this down to what Stephen A. just told Monica McNutt. This is some real love and hip hop down. I mean, I, you put it love and hip hop in Atlanta, love and hip hop New York. This is really some love and hip hop. He basically is telling her right now, and it translates that I'm your boss. Okay, you need to shut up. Okay, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Okay, Molly wouldn't be here. None of y'all would be here if it wasn't for me. I, Stephen A. Smith, is your boss. I'm the executive producer. I call all the shots on first take. Okay? And folks, take a listen. This this one here needs a referee because we go on WBC 12 rounds championship on this one. And this is very How about Andrea Carter? Who's a rising star in this business? How much did you think first take helped that? What about Kimberly Martin? What about Molly Kerum herself? Now, did Stephen A. just take the whole card to Molly Karam? Okay, and basically what Stephen A. is doing right now, this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We're powered up by Fanatics. Folks, what Stephen A. is doing right now, let me just kind of share with you. He is taking the full power card over the top of everybody that's on television. He is basically telling everybody that comes on first take, none of you would have been anything unless it was for me. Now, this is a man that's going down deep and shallow, okay, because I will tell you this, the disrespect, I've been on this for a minute, okay, the disrespect of women empowerment, the disrespect of women, how you feel that you are dominating over women, you control women, you are explaining that women have nothing to do and you have all the power. And that is a bad place to be. I learned that. I coach women's basketball. I had two great friends check me all the time. Coach Belita, Coach Sheila. Hey, you out of line, okay? Stephen A. Smith cut and stuck his foot in his mouth, okay? Got on there with Monica McNutt. And Monica McNutt straight up checked him and told him, you know what? Quit lying. Quit lying, Monica McNutt told Stephen A. Smith. Quit lying. You could have done this on your platform years ago, okay? And he got so angry and so frustrated behind this that he had to go on his podcast and start trying to pull rank. Folks, this is love and hip-hop at its best. Take a listen to Mr. Stephen A. Smith. It's almost like a man without a country. Take a listen. This is unbelievable to me. I I got my referee jersey on because I know. Now, I have sat back for years. And taking a lot of shit from people. Some who don't know what the hell they're talking about. Some who act like they don't know just because they want to get at me. I could care less about people getting at me. I just want you to be accurate. And it is highly offensive to me. When somebody implies or flat out states like Monica McNutt did. Monica McNutt did this morning which was factually incorrect Stephen A. Smith then lost his mind folks and let me tell you why I know he lost his mind because you know what Carrie A. Champion the other co-host that used to be over there see this is this the problem when you get some people that uh, get ahead of themselves okay and they get ran out of their territory And when they get ran out of their territory, then all of a sudden they want to go and start attacking women. And, you know, basically it's just being a chauvinist pig, okay, which has no doubt about it. I mean, I had a tough sister, uh, my sister Joyce, and she used to ride me out all the time. Brother, you got to change your ways. 
You know, I turned 60. I said, hey, man, you know what? I was wrong. Okay, but here's the deal. Man, you, you, you going up against these women and you calling them out and basically telling them they're worthless. You basically tell them everything they have is because of you. Okay, and this is a bad situation. And let me tell you how bad a situation is when you get people like Stephen A. Smith, you get love and hip hop coming into the world and you're bringing love and hip hop, you're gonna bring that on over into the game, okay? And when you bring that over into the game and you do that, folks, you got to understand that you got, you know, Molly McNutt sitting here and you got somebody that's checking you for the fact that you're out of line, okay? And you talking about you holding up the WNBA and with Caitlin Clark, and I got a lot of respect for Caitlin Clark because Caitlin Clark is a five-star player. Okay, what is a five-star player? And there's not a whole lot of them that are in the WNBA. You can shoot it. You can pass it, you can dribble it, you can defend it, you can block it, and you can think it. Okay, there's not a lot of players there. And I heard the comment uh, coming from Carter just saying, well, what does she do? Shoot. Well, what does the WNBA need? Shooters. You're shooting less than 30%. Some teams are shooting so bad, it's horrendous. Okay, but you need shooters and you need five-star players and people. Are, basically, it comes down. You need more Caitlin Clarks. And not really just Caitlin Clark. You need more 40, 50, 90 players, okay? What are 40, 50, 90 players in the WNBA? You shoot 40% from the three-point line. You shoot 50% from the field, and you shoot 90% from the three-point line. That's what the WNBA wants. That's the type of player the WNBA needs to be successful because the game they want to put on the court today is displaying the shooting, the shooting from distance, the passing, and understanding the manufactured offense that are on the court. So to put it as to Caitlin Clark, here's the problem when you do what you're saying, or Stephen A. saying for Caitlin Clark and what Monica McNutt is saying, and she clearly said, if you haven't seen it, take a listen. Here's the hard part what you're doing for all the young ladies who are growing up and trying to understand this because the WNBA, the, the main factor that they have to understand is you got kids watching the game now. And when you got kids watching the game, here's what changes. Okay, they're going to look up and they're going to see role models. And what are those role models got to do? They got to show the way, okay? Now, with Kaylin Clark, the, the, the way the media is portraying it, and it's Main Street. And let's be honest, Main Street, I mean, we haven't covered the WNBA to the extent that we know. We're just coming in, like I said, coming in like the NFL. 